Now we are seeing a problem from the topic principal stresses and strains. Let's see the problem. At a point in a strain material, the principal tensile stresses across two perpendicular planes are 80 Newton per mm square and 40 Newton per mm square. Determine the normal stress, shear stress and the resultant stress on a plane inclined at 20 degrees with the major principal plane. Determine also the obliquity. What will be the intensity of stress which acting alone will produce the same maximum strain if Poisson's ratio is 1.4. So here in this question, uh, uh, at this point in the strain material, two stresses are given in two perpendicular uh, directions. Let us take an x and y directions. And uh, the major stress we are taking, it has 80 Newton per mm square and minor stress 40 the y direction and here uh, we are supposed to find out uh, normal and shear stresses on an oblique plane which is making an angle of uh, 20 degrees with the major principal uh, plane. So with this uh, so we have discussed these uh, planes uh, will be the uh, principal planes where uh, only your uh, angel stress is acting. So this is discussed in the uh, derivation of uh, principal stresses and strains in case 2. Please refer that. So here uh, uh, we are supposed to find out normal and shear stresses on this oblique plane and also the resultant stress and uh, obliquity. So to find out first, uh, first of all uh, resultant and obliquity we have to find out normal and shear stresses on this oblique plane. So to find out that we are having formulas. So in that formulas we are supposed to substitute this sigma x and sigma y values and we will simplify to get normal and shear stress after that we will get resultant stress and also obliquity and after that uh, we will find out uh, in which direction we will have maximum uh, uh, strain in x or y we have find, uh, we'll find and uh, we will equate that with the uh, strain caused by some x or sigma such that we will find out the sigma value by using this Poisson's ratio. So this is the procedure we will follow to solve this uh, question. Before that, uh, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and activate bell symbol. And also please share my videos with your friends. And also please follow our channel on Facebook for which I am giving this link in the description. So anyway, uh, here theta value is given 20 degrees. Uh, that is I told uh, the angle made by this uh, oblique plane with the uh, major principal uh, stress. So here uh, this is uh, we are taking this a uh, major principal stress direction 80 Newton per mm square and Poisson's ratio is given uh, 1.4 mu that is we are taking and here first of all you have to suppose to find out uh, normal stress on this uh, inclined or oblique plane uh, that is given by the formula sigma n is equals to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta. So friends for this uh, formula of uh, normal stress and uh, uh, shear stress on the oblique plane please refer the previous video that is the uh, principal stresses and strains case 2 video. So we will get this formula derivation or explanation. So in this formula let us substitute the given values. So sigma x is given 80, uh, sigma y 40 and uh, here also 80, 40 and uh, cos theta value is given 20. So 2 into 20 and when you simplify that we are getting normal stress as a 75.32 Newton per mm square. In the same way shear stress on the oblique plane or inclined plane is given by the formula sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into sin 2 theta. So sigma x given 80 and it is 40 given sin 2 into theta is 20 degrees and when you simplify that uh, we are getting this uh, tangential or shear stress on the oblique plane as 12.84 Newton per mm square. And now resultant stress is given by the formula sigma r is equals to under root of sigma n square plus sigma t square. And just if you observe here this is the uh, major and minor uh, principal stresses directions and uh, this is the oblique plane. So sigma t, this is the sigma t is the tangential or shear stress on the oblique plane and uh, sigma n is the normal stress and if you see this sigma r is the resultant stress. So that resultant stress from this diagram we can say it is under root of uh, sigma n square plus sigma t square. Sigma n we got 75.32 square and sigma t we got 12.84. So when you simplify that we are getting the resultant stress as 76.40 Newton per mm square. And here uh, we are supposed to find out 
one more thing that is obliquity so here obliquity is nothing but angle made by the resultant with the normal to the oblique plane so this is a five we have to find out so just if you see from this uh, uh, diagram so this is sigma t we can represent here and this is a sigma n and this is sigma t and this sigma r so from this uh, triangle you can just define tan phi is equals to opposite opposite by adjacent that is sigma t by sigma n or phi is equals to tan inverse of sigma t by sigma n so sigma t tangential stress we got uh, 12.84 and uh, sigma n we got 75.32 so when you simplify that we are getting obliquity that is phi as 9 degrees 67 minutes so here and uh, we have to find out one stress that will uh, produce the maximum stress in this case so here first of all so this uh, is the case means uh, which is happening uh, means stresses are acting in two directions principal stresses so in this case what is the maximum strain developing so that strain is developed by a uh, only single stress means if this uh, part or this uh, uh, point in the member is acted upon by only or the member is acted upon only by a single stress that uh, stress we have to find out when in that case and this case the strain is equal so that is a meaning there in the question so for that purpose we are supposed to find out uh, uh, in, in this case in the given case uh, in which direction there is a maximum strain is happening so we are supposed uh, from that we are find out the uh, strain value so sorry it is a strain we have to find out so we will find out the strain value uh, in this uh, given case and will equate to that to the assumed of sigma value means we will assume only one uh, stress that is sigma which will create the strain and that strain and this uh, in this case strain will equate that thus that will find out the uh, only one strain sigma so here uh, first of all in the given case the maximum strain obviously will happens in the x direction we have uh, assumed here so why because we have um, taken major in the x direction and the minor in the y direction so it is that is 18 newton per mm square in the x direction 40 newton per mm square in the y direction so here uh, definitely the maximum strain will happen in the x direction in our case so the strain is given by the formula so where uh, sigma x by e stress by x more or less minus uh, mu that is uh, poisson's ratio into sigma y by e so let us discuss how we, how we can write this formula We know x modulus is equal to stress by strain and from that we can write strain is equal to stress by x modulus. So we can write strain is equal to stress by x modulus. So that is E is equal to small e is equal to that is strain stress by uh, uh, x modulus. We are finding out maximum strain that is strain in x direction. So we can write simply so strain in x direction E x is equal to sigma x by E minus uh, mu into sigma y by E. So how you can write means so we know Poisson's ratio definition that is lateral strain by longitudinal strain or uh, secondary strain by uh, primary strain so that, that we also you can define so anyway we know this uh, lateral strain by longitudinal strain and if you see a strain in the x direction that is a maximum strain so you can write uh, just uh, simply uh, stress by x modulus sigma e, uh, x by e and also at the same time the member or the part or the point is also subjected uh, by sigma y also at the same time so the stress in this direction uh, will cause a strain in the x direction uh, and that strain will be the uh, negative strain means it will uh, decrease the length in this x direction so this uh, y means the strain in y direction will increase uh, dimension in this y direction but it will decrease the uh, dimension in the x direction so this strain sigma y also is uh, affecting the strain in the x direction so oh, so to get the overall or maximum uh, stress in the x direction we have to consider the uh, effect of this stress also so that effect uh, we can consider with the help of uh, or it is uh, poisons ratio times of uh, this uh, strain so so here we can observe uh, we are calculating uh, this uh, strain in the x direction because of the uh, stress which is happening in the y direction so if you take that Poisson's ratio lateral strain by longitudinal strain. so strain in x direction because of this strain in y direction 
so so if you write poisson's ratio uh, a definition lateral strain by longitudinal strain so uh, you are you are taking the uh, stress in y direction means so this is the primary direction or this uh, the strain in this direction is will become uh, longitudinal uh, strain and uh, other direction will become lateral strain so why because you are taking stress in this direction so this will become longitudinal strain or primary strain or in our uh, definition it is a longitudinal strain and this is lateral strain so simply you can write in the place of lateral strain so lateral strain is sigma x by e that is ex that is sigma x by e stress by x more or less and the longitudinal strain will be sigma y by e so from that if you just uh, rearrange the terms suppose uh, you we require a strain in uh, this x direction so that will be the x is equals to uh, this term ey into suppose if you just consider the first and last we require ex so that is uh, mu into ey and ey we can write sigma y by e so this is the stress sorry strain in x direction because of the uh, stress in y direction so you can write strain in x direction because of stress in y, uh, y direction is mu times of mu times of uh, strain in y direction so so but this will uh, create uh, negative uh, strain means decrease in the length so uh, and uh, the stress or the strain created by this uh, direct stress sigma x in the x direction will uh, increase the length of the member so and this will decrease the uh, length of the member so we are supposed to minus that so so, so for that purpose we are just writing minus here uh, so sigma x by e minus mu into sigma y by e so we can write 1 by e common so this is sigma x minus mu into sigma y sigma x given 80 mu is uh, 1 by 4 poisson's ratio given and sigma by 40 so when you simplify that we are getting uh, this as a uh, 70 by e let us take this as 1 and here uh, let us assume uh, sigma is the only uh, one stress acting alone will produce the same uh, maximum strain means this is the strain produced by the given case means the member is acted upon by that two stresses uh, simultaneously so this is the strain value and this same strain is happen happening when only it is uh, acted upon by the single stress that is let us take it as sigma so when you take uh, sigma the strain created or strain developed due to the stress uh, this uh, assumed stress sigma is nothing but we can uh, write simply strain is stress by x mod less so stress is sigma we are taking and x mod less so this strain and uh, this must be equal because uh, he is uh, given ma maximum strain is same in the question given so he is given uh, what will be the intensity of stress which acting alone will produce the same maximum strain same maximum strain means maximum strain happening in this uh, given situation so strains should be equal that's why we are equating this strain and uh, uh, this uh, strain so sigma by e is equals to 70 by e so just when you simplify we are getting the sigma value as a 70 newton per mm square so this is the stress uh, uh, acting alone which will produce this same uh, maximum strain so this is a way to solve this kind of question for more videos uh, don't forget to subscribe and activate bell symbol and also share my videos with your friends thanks for watching